Today we'll talk about the new reusable spacecraft from Europe, test whether the concept works in Kerbal Space Program and discuss if this could finally offer independent human launch capability for Europeans. Let's go! Hello everybody and welcome. Meet Susie. No, the term in this case is not a short version of Suzanne, we're talking about the space business, so of course it's an acronym. Smart upper stage for innovative exploration. Let's stick to Susie for the rest of the video. I still believe one of the developers has a daughter called Susie and tried to come up with a fitting collection of words to create that acronym. Anyhow, what is it actually? It is a new spacecraft concept from Ariane Group, the company behind the successful Ariane rocket family. Some media outlets are already touting SUSE as the European Starship, but that's not really what it is at all. In reality, it's more like a reusable cargo and crew vehicle, sort of a crossover between the old Hermes space plane concept and SpaceX's first ideas for the Crew Dragon capsule. Just bigger. Let's look at some of the known specifications. SUSE is supposed to be 12 meters in length and should be able to fit on the 5 meter diameter Ariane 6 rocket. The entire vehicle mass should be 25 tons including up to 7 tons of payload or a crew of 5 astronauts. It must not weigh more because of Ariane 6 maximum payload capacity to low earth orbit. More on that near the end. By the way, if you want to learn more about Ariane 6 and the Ariane rocket family history, I have a video about that linked up top and in the description. One of the more interesting aspects of the SUSE concept is how it gets back to Earth. The press materials shows the vehicle performing a propulsive landing, not unlike the original plans for SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which were abandoned in favor of a parachute landing in the sea. One of the slides Arian Group showed during the International Astronautical Congress 2022 in Paris claimed that the vehicle will have a lifting body, meaning SUSE is designed to produce lift without any wings, which should help during atmospheric reentry. Whether or not the black petals in the rear are going to be used as some sort of control surface or if they are purely decorative is yet unknown. One of the pictures in the press releases also shows a variant of SUSE with a shorter set of these petals. Why? Who knows? My viewers are usually a very smart bunch, so you have already noticed that a lot of things surrounding this vehicle are still unknown. I tried to get in touch with Ariane Group via their media contacts, but I did not receive any more information than is available in the press release. So unfortunately, I have to fill in the many gaps with educated guesses based on what little is available publicly. But first let's get back to the propulsive landing part. Aside from SpaceX, nobody has yet managed to land an orbital class spacecraft vertically. The space shuttle famously used its wings and any other capsule carrying crew uses parachutes up until now. Unless something new comes around, SUSE will be the first crewed vehicle to use rocket engines alone for landing safely. The problem with this? Ariane Group does not have any experience with soft landing anything from orbit. So far, all Ariane rockets are expendable, including Ariane 6. There is the Callisto project, a cooperation between the German Aerospace Center DLR, French space agency CNES and the Japanese space agency JAXA for a reusable rocket which has been ongoing since 2019 and is supposed to launch sometime 2023. Lessons learned from that will be used for the follow-up to Ariane 6, codename Ariane Next, which shapes up to be very similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9. But would SUSE even work? Well, until Ariane Group actually produces a working test article, I'll have to make do with the best tool I have at hand. Kerbal Space Program. Here it is on top of an Ariane 6, the same replica I used in the video I mentioned earlier. Launch works pretty well, unless you count this spin a -rooney, which didn't matter in the end, because this launcher is way more powerful than it needs to be. 
So yes, I was able to get this into orbit, which honestly is not something I would doubt for the real Susie based on the ARIA track record. Just to make sure I didn't cause any unwanted explosions during separation, I already deployed those petals at the bottom of my Susie replica. I know the press material shows them closed, but in space it doesn't really matter anyway. And then we come to the cargo bay. A big portion of the vehicle is reserved for the 40 cubic meters of cargo space. Here we have a docking module, something Ariane Group suggests could be used to dock the vehicle to some sort of space station that looks a little like the ISS, but not really. And we also have a small payload we're deploying for whatever it's going to do next. I do realize that my solar panels are a lot smaller than the ones in the concept pictures, but that was the only way to not have an additional robotic part on it, which would then flop around during re-entry. Speaking of which, here we go, let's try out whether or not this design can withstand re-entry and land without any parachutes. And yes, we're bleeding off a lot of velocity and can slow down nicely. At something below 2000 meters above the surface, I throttle up the engine and try to make the vehicle go vertical and... Again! Again! Well, this is a simulation and I'm just a dumb human and not a state-of-the-art computer that would be able to calculate a perfect trajectory and control the vehicle much more precise than me. But still, after just two failed attempts, I was able to execute a soft landing here in the desert. So yeah, the concept works. In Kerbal Space Program. Which is, of course, the gold standard for rocket engineering. Okay, so what can we really expect from Susie? Let's be honest here, Europe does not have the best track record when it comes to crewed vehicles. About 40 years ago, French space agency CNES started development on the Hermes space plane. In 1987, ESA took over development of the vehicle that was slated for launch on the then also in development Ariane 5 launch vehicle. The project was dropped in 1992 and ESA abandoned the idea of producing their own vehicles, instead focusing on finding potential partners. This resulted in ESA astronauts having to hitch a ride on either American or Russian vehicles. The space shuttle until 2011, Soyuz and SpaceX's Crew Dragon since 2020. All of this worked fine until February 2022, when Russia invaded Ukraine, which resulted in ESA cutting ties with the Russian space agency Roscosmos for many projects. And these projects got delayed because of that, including the ExoMars mission, which was originally designed to get to the surface of Mars on top of a Russian lander. All of this was a stark reminder of how dependent Europe is on other nations for human launch capability. Many voices within ESA, including Director General Josef Aschbacher and Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano, were calling for autonomous access to space for European astronauts, even before of all of that happened with the Russian invasion. This is reminiscent of former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, who always demanded that American astronauts be launched on American rockets from American soil, after the space agency had to rely on renting Soyuz seats for many years after the shuttle's final flight. If SUSE succeeds, and that is still a big if, it could finally offer human launch capability to Europe without the reliance on other space agencies. If I may insert my personal thoughts on this, it's a shame that this has not happened sooner. Foreign policy is only about cooperation as long as it suits the nations participating. If a partner withdraws because they want to protect their own interests, Europe will fall behind in space and that's a big lost opportunity right there. Whether you like it or not, space will become a trillion dollar or euro industry, which is a topic for another video. Having access to this domain will become invaluable for any nation within the next decades. Currently, only the United States, Russia and China are capable of sending humans safely into space. India is working on their own vehicle, which is supposed to launch within the next few years. 
Just like the Ariane rocket family was created to offer Europe autonomous cargo access to space and not rely on the US or Russia back in the 1970s, SUSE or something similar is needed to give ESA more flexibility and independence for launching crew. As someone from Europe myself, who still dreams of going to space one day, despite being rejected as astronaut candidate, this is a project that I would very much like to see succeed. And here is where I think we will all have to temper our enthusiasm. Even if SUSE goes into production, and I'm not sure that it will, more on that in just a moment, it will be many years until it ever flies. Early design work on Ariane 6 started roughly 10 years ago with test vehicles developed from 2016 onwards. In 2019, the maiden flight was planned for 2020. Now it's scheduled for 2023. And in this iteration, Ariane 6 will only be able to lift less than 22 tons into low Earth orbit. That's not enough to get SUSE up there without it having to use its own engine for completing orbital insertion. But then the vehicle will have less propellant available for deorbit and landing. So the vehicle will have to wait for the next evolution of Ariane 6, which will probably have a new upper stage and improved solid rocket boosters that should, in theory and in combination, boost the payload capacity of Ariane 6 to 25 tons or maybe even more. But to be honest, the biggest problem is the design of SUSE itself, sort of a jack-of-all-trades kind of vehicle that wants to do everything at once. A lot of things don't really add up here. If the 7 tons of cargo are included in the 25 tons of mass budget, then it leaves 18 tons for the vehicle. We have no idea how much propellant will be on board or what type of engines, so we don't know the mass of that. The crew compartment up front will also cut into the mass budget. What materials will the fuselage be made of? Carbon fiber, aluminium, steel? We don't know. So we can't really say anything about the dry mass of the vehicle. But the vehicle itself is already huge compared to Crew Dragon or even Orion standing 12 meters tall and 5 meters wide. So the fuselage alone will already weigh a lot. I mentioned Hermes earlier. It too was at the beginning a very ambitious project that had to be shrunk and cut down until not much of the originally proposed capability was left before getting cancelled. In the beginning the space plane was planned for up to 6 astronauts with 4.5 tons of payload and a wet mass of 15 tons. In its final form, after years of development, Hermes had grown to 21 tons, the maximum payload capacity of Ariane 5, and could only carry 3 astronauts and 3 tons of cargo. I'm afraid we will see something similar happen with SUSE because of the aforementioned inconsistencies and lack of experience on the side of Ariane Group with crewed vehicles or propulsive landing. Remember when SpaceX proposed the interplanetary transport system? The idea is still alive in Starship, but the vehicle looks much different than originally presented. But maybe Susie's real purpose is not to actually produce the thing, but to reignite the dream of European human launch capability that died 30 years ago and challenge others to come up with more ideas. Let's just hope this dream does not turn into another nightmare. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.